Hello, hello, friends. Uh, my name is Matt Heaton, and I'm going to just talk to you a little bit about E minor, the glorious key of E minor in standard tuning for trad Irish music. Um, so in E minor, you probably know, most of the time you're playing an E Dorian, which means you're playing, the biggest chords you're playing are E minor and D. You're not playing a B7 chord, right? You're not, there's never really... <laughs> Now you're never really going to get that sound. So E minor and D. If you're in standard tuning, uh, the out of the box E minor and D are this. Which uh, I don't love. Um, I don't love because they're, they're kind of, the voice leading is weird. You have like, you're going all the way down to this low E and then up to that, which is kind of strange. And then this situation constantly just kind of doesn't doesn't do it for me. So I'm going to show you a few options for um, E minor voicings. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is just ignore the bottom two strings entirely. Okay, so this is going, if you play an E minor with just the top four strings, it's only one finger, right? And if you want to make it a little more droney sounding, play the E and the B, the B on the third string um, fourth fret. You can also see if you're in tune, sort of. So that right there gives you this kind of neutral sort of sound, right? It's it's kind of um, it's a nice bass. And then the if you want to go to a D chord from there, I would actually do this. So I'm only playing one finger. I'm playing the A note on the second fret of the third string uh, and leaving everything else open. So I've got a D here and then an, a B and an E up top. So the these the, the B and the up top, the B and the E up top kind of act as a drone, right? So you end up with a thing like this. Like if you're thinking of something like, you know, Cooley's really young. Okay, so that's, um, for starters, that's kind of nice. Then you can, you can add things to it. Uh, you could play, um, one thing that I like to do is I'll play the, if you've got a tune where it's like two bars of E minor and two bars of D, uh, I would like to mix it up a little. So I might play E, that E, and then I use my pinky on the fifth fret of the fourth string. So, what is that chord? I'm thinking of it as E minor over G, but you could, you know, you could make an argument for a couple of different, you could, you know, G6 or whatever, but... And then... The D chord with a F sharp on the, on the, um, fourth fret. So, what it gives you is, you, you give, now you have two voicings to play with. You've got your root voicing and then with a third in the bass, and then you've got your root voicing and then a third in the bass. And that all of a sudden gives you those four notes as possible bass lines, like... Right, and just, and, and again, I have not played, I haven't even touched the bottom two strings yet. So these, these two voicings, and then kind of messing around with other other things you can and of course you know from there you could add you could think of adding you know add your high note if you want it um, and then you can kind of think of those things uh, if you then you know want to add some bass notes that kind of thing now so that's all first position stuff we I'm not I'm not really going to talk a lot about the the six string stuff right at the moment uh, again we're in standard tuning so your low E is your is your friend there um, now up another thing that I really like to do is up higher I'll do this sort of thing where I'll now what this voicing is is I'm taking it's basically this bar chord shape right but I'm thinning it out um, so I'm not playing all the notes, but it's based on that shape. So I play open E, seventh fret, first finger, muted, muted, um, fourth string, 
then the uh, ninth fret on the third string and the eighth fret, eighth fret on the um, second string, open first string. And I'm actually I'm fingering it with these fingers because it's easier with um, three and four. So this is a nice E minor chord. And then instead of shifting the whole mess to a D chord, I'm just shifting these top two notes to a couple notes from a D chord. So everything else is going to stay there. So this is these two notes would be uh, on the second and third strings, both on the seventh fret. Okay. So and the way I'm doing it, I'm using fingers three and four here. And then the first finger, I mean, sorry, the third finger stays down, slides down one fret, and then you get those two fingers, uh, the do it with two and three. So, and then you get to kind of, it's so you, you have this nice low droney thing. And a nice way to use that is to kind of keep your uh, keep your rhythm on the low the low droney thing, and then just use that to punctuate the chord change. Right, uh, and it's sort of still like Dennis Cahill uh, kind of does does this um, with you know picking fingers. It's a very, uh, very kind of Cahill-y sound, which I love. Um, so those two chords you can get an awful lot of, awful lot of mileage out of. Um, and if you watched the other, the other uh, video on the D chord that I, up there, um, which is D on the tenth fret, mute, open, third thing, third uh, string, the eleventh fret, and then the. 10th fret on the 2nd string. Makes a nice change too. That, so this one, all the motion is in the top voices, the bottom stays the same. This one, you're moving the, the bottom voice around um, from the E to the D. And again, all of this stuff that we've done, all of this is just two chords. Obviously there are more chords. Um, the one chord I will caution you uh, about is the C chord. A lot of people will throw a C chord into a, an E minor tune rather uh, haphazardly, uh, giving you the stereo heaven. Right. A lot of these tunes don't have a C natural in them. Um, if you if you listen to the melody, if you really parse through it, there's probably not a C natural. There's probably a C sharp, if anything at all. Um, so you kind of it's it, you know it's not to say that you can never ever play it, but I usually you know shouldn't be your go-to. You know, it's like it's like the hottest jar of hot sauce on your shelf. You don't want to put it on everything. Um, instead, you could do you know an A chord is nice to get you to a D or. Or and so what I'm that's a C sharp right there uh, and it leads you up to the D um, so to review because I don't want to go too long gang uh, for the first position stuff just trying to find an in tune guitar and trying to kind of give a that neutral thing then you can add different notes in the bass. For the D chord, I'm really just playing a one note thing because I like the droney. Uh, and then up here, you've got this and this as your big go-tos. And once you start messing around with this, you might learn that you might find other places you can use this shape because, um, you know, it actually works pretty well, you know, in D minor too. Um, so that's it. Uh, those are some E minor ideas. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions or you know, feel free to get in touch if you need further explanation of this. And uh, thank you to Shannon for letting me do a few uh, guest backing videos. Take care. Happy tunes.